Welcome to the Mountain Cast. As we're in our winter season, there are plenty of cold weather topics to cover, but today in this video, we're going to be looking at crampons. So what are they, what are the different types, and when is it appropriate to use them? What is a crampon? So in simple terms, a crampon is a tooth metal device that fits your boots and gives you traction on hard snow and ice. For anyone heading into the outdoors in freezing conditions, they're an absolutely essential piece of winter kit. During this video, I'll take you through all the things you need to consider before choosing a pair of crampons appropriate for the activities that you do in the outdoors. First things first, the crampon you pick needs to be compatible with your boots or the boots you may need to buy so that they will fit correctly. Using the wrong type of boot and crampon combination can be dangerous, particularly in the hostile environments we intend to use them. You'd be surprised how much flex there is even in the stiffest of boots, so your crampon must be able to twist and to stay safely on your boot. So now we'll run through the different types of crampons and boots available, then we'll look at all the individual components. Every crampon is essentially made of two sections, the binding and the spiked base. The C rating mainly relates to the binding, or in simple terms, how this attaches to your boot. It basically gives a guide of what boot will fit what binding system. So the two questions you need to answer are, Will the crampon be compatible with the activities we are planning on doing? I, are we just going hill walking? Are we planning to venture into rough terrain? Two, will the bindings be compatible with your boot? If you can get the answer to both of these, you'll have nailed the type of crampon you need for what you are doing and know that your boots will work with them. To make things a little more complicated, some crampon bases or models are available with different types of bindings, which as you guessed it, means they may have different crampon ratings. Here I have my Grivel G12 as an example. One pair of the G12 new classics that feature a heel and toe cradle, and these are rated as a C1. My second pair, the Grivel G12 pneumatic, have a heel lever, and a toe cradle and a rated C2. The G12 Crampomatic is also available with a heel lever and a toe bar, which then makes it a C3 crampon. This is something that really confuses people, so as long as you remember that any particular model can come with a variety of different binding systems, you won't go far wrong. But before we go into the specifics for each crampon type, there are two main components generally all crampons have. So number one is the flex bar. The flex bar is a piece of metal that joins the front and the back of the crampon. How this is attached to the crampon plates dictates the flex of the binding and thus the rating. These bars can be easily replaced or changed as required. Anti-balling or anti-bot plates are designed to stop snow collecting at the base of the crampon. Most are made from a flexible rubber compound which clips into the base. Almost all crampons come with these and they're easily replaced if they get lost or damaged. So micro spikes aren't crampons, but for completeness, I've included them in this video. These can be fitted to almost any type of boot or shoe with varying degrees of efficiency. The more flexible the boot, the more chance they will start to move around on the base of your foot or annoyingly work loose. Crampons are actually classified as PPE and have to meet very stringent safety guidelines. Micro spikes aren't, so it can be a bit of a gamble as to how good or safe each pair can be. Most designs feature short spikes about a quarter to half an inch long on the inner portion of the sole. This configuration means they're predominantly suited to flat or low angle terrain. Benefits include ease of transport, they're really lightweight, fairly straightforward to put on, and they take up far less room in your pack than crampons. Although some would say these reasons become secondary to the fact that they can fit virtually any bit of footwear and don't necessarily require a new costly boot to marry them up with. The issue comes from the main support from a crampon comes from being mounted to a supportive boot. 
With micro spikes, you don't have this support, making them far more likely to slip or slide. When choosing whether to deploy spikes or not would come down to the consequences of a slip for me. So for instance, if I slip at low level on a country path, I may look a bit stupid and have some shiny bruises. Worst case, I break something, but at least I know getting to hospital isn't really going to be a problem. If, however, I was up a mountain, that slip could mean a long slide or drop over steep ground, or God forbid, a rocky crag. In those environments, saving yourself from a slip is very difficult, and most of the safety really comes from not slipping in the first place. Even the possibility of being stuck somewhere like Snowdon for five hours waiting for mountain rescue to come save you in the middle of winter is enough for me to discount the use of spikes most of the time. With that said though, they are an option provided you're aware of their limits, so some forethought as to the conditions you are likely to encounter is required before planning to use them. So on to crampons, and first up are strapped crampons which are usually C1 rated. For boots without crampon specific attachments, like regular hiking boots, insulated winter boots, approach shoes or mountaineering boots with over boots, a strap style crampon is necessary. In addition to these types of non-rated footwear, they are compatible with B1, B2 and B3 boots. Strap crampons are ideal for providing traction on easy terrain or for use on unconventional footwear. These are the most flexible crampons available, which is why they can fit well on so many different types of boots. And most models in this range will have 10 points or teeth. The points are generally horizontal, which gives the best bite on snow or soft ice, making them ideal for winter walking and easy climbs but they can be very poor on technical terrain. If you're planning on doing anything other than walking, i.e. a bit of winter scrambling, I'd definitely be looking at the semi-auto category, which is C2. So hybrids or semi-automatic, which are generally C2 rated crampons. Semi-autos are a hybrid between strap-on and automatic crampons and are suitable for winter hiking, scrambling, routes with a mix of rock and ice, and general mountaineering. They have a heel lever and a toe cradle, and those pull together to fix the binding to the boot. Semi-autos will usually have longer spikes and sharper front points, and the majority of them generally have 12 points instead of the 10 you get on a C1 crampon. This means they are still suitable to walk long distances in, but you can trust them to climb hard when needed. The one downside, they can't be used with any old boot. A B2 or a B3 with a heel notch is required, and this can be quite costly if you need to invest in new footwear as well as new crampons. That said, this would be my go-to crampon for 90% of the stuff I do in the UK. And the purchase of a good quality B2, C2 combination will be a great investment which should last you the test of time. Step-in or automatic crampons are generally C3 rated. Step-in and automatic crampons are ideal for vertical ice climbing, mixed climbing and technical mountaineering. This system is fully rigid and step-in so they can only be used with rigid B3 type boots. They're really aggressive with 12 to 14 points or more and usually feature vertical front points to give maximum penetration on ice. Most people watching this video are unlikely to ever need a C3 crampon. So now we know about the different crampon types, we can now look at the boots to go with them. B0 boots have flexible soles and uppers, which means they are mega comfortable for hiking, but generally inappropriate for use on snow. The excessive flex means the crampon can pull or work loose, which can have catastrophic consequences. In addition, the nice tough straps there can dig into really soft fabrics and it can cause quite a bit of discomfort and pain. B1 boots are classified as four season, all year round hiking boots made for epic mountain days that might involve scrambling and they certainly have the potential to be used for winter hill walking. 
The sole is stiffened, which means they can be used with crampons, but only a C1 as they have the most flexibility. The C1 B1 combo is adequate for most UK winter walks and gentle snow fun. B2 boots are the go-to for winter mountain goers or summer alpinists. So the sole and the uppers have a degree of stiffening, making them suitable for a more rigid crampon like a C2, but they are flexible enough for a long hike. The upper is generally a bit thicker than in most boots, so they are warmer and definitely suitable for cold days out. A C1 or a C2 rated crampon with a B2 boot is a capable winter Munro machine or as a low to mid-end winter climber. And a bonus, if you do get abroad, uh, these boots are absolutely fantastic for summer alpinism. So b uh fully fledged mountaineering boot for mixed and ice climbing of the highest level, you know. They are incredibly rigid, making them ideal for step kicking, steep terrain, and front pointing. So unless you are starting your journey into true alpinism or ice climbing, you do not need to worry about this category at all. So we've put together the info to pick a crampon most suitable for us and now it's time to look at the crampons do's and don'ts. Before we go that though, provided you look after your crampons, they should last for years and they will need minimal maintenance to keep them in top condition. Avoiding using crampons on rock is not as easy as it sounds. Taking them on and off on a long mixed route sometimes is completely impractical. The main issue here is the longer they're used on rock, the quicker the points will blunt and also increase the chance of bending them. So storing them in a crampon bag is a really good investment. They're about 14 quid, these bags. And basically they stop you slicing and dicing all your, your new brand new spanking hard shell or any of the other gear while you're in transit or when you, you know, get them back home and put them away. As a minimum, uh, I would say a crampon crown like this one from Grivel, uh, which covers those super sharp points, is absolute minimum uh, before you put them away. So, storing them correctly, uh, you need to make sure they're completely dry before storing them, as if they are wet and they get put away, they will rust. Good practice is to run a lightly oiled rag, any old oil will do, absolutely fine, and then run it over the metal components before putting them away and that'll keep that lovely and shiny and rust free for years to come. Using micro spikes or crampons can be damaging to the environment. Erosion due to micro spike or crampon use is destructive to paths, turf, rock, uh, if they're not frozen or don't have a reasonable amount of neve on them. So neve is a type of snow that is partially melted, refrozen and then compacted. My personal feelings are that if I can progress safely without the use of spikes or crampons, then I will do so. If it would be unsafe to start a route and then stop to put them on further into the route, then I will put them on at the start. Only you can judge when underfoot conditions are getting too much for just your boots and it may be time to put more protection on them. Please, please, please don't default to putting them on because there is snow on the ground, okay? They should only be used sparingly and when required. My rule of thumb every time, if you're taking a crampon, you need to take an axe. So having an axe and knowing how to use it is just as essential as deploying your crampons. In the event you do slip, knowing how to ice axe a rest can prevent serious injury or even death. I've dropped a fantastic video in the description below from the Mountain Training Association, the MTA, uh, which details how to start learning how to self-arrest correctly. I would, however, always recommend professional instruction and there are plenty of excellent providers up and down the country. And that wraps up our video on crampons. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So what combinations are your go-to or do you tinker around with? Or maybe after watching this video, what crampons are you planning to go out and buy now? If you want to see more videos like this one, please, please, please like and subscribe to the channel for our day-to-day -day stuff and mini how-tos and general uh, fun and hijinks. We're on Instagram and that's at UK. 
And if you're looking for mountain skills courses like intro to scrambling, climbing or navigation, head to our website for the full list of courses and it's www.scramblelist.co.uk. So I hope everyone got uh, got something from the video today and yeah, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. But apart from that, yeah, go off on outdoors and keep yourself safe. Thank you everyone.